so thank you so much for having me. I know that there are many worthy organizations that um, might use your time, so we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I also want to say I feel completely at home. I am a small business owner myself, as are two of my siblings. And what an amazing opportunity at Tartan. That is so cool. You guys just go for it. You take advantage of everything you can. It's so encouraging to me to hear that those things are happening. So um, the Real Hope Project exists to help provide for every families, for every child who's waiting in the Minnesota foster care system today. And we do that through creating high quality, personalized video reels for each child. So right now in the state of Minnesota, if you were interested in adopting from foster care, you would get uh, quite an extensive and comprehensive list of all of the traumas that had happened to the child. At the bottom of the page, you would see a static photo Maybe at the end you might see something that says, and they like soccer, and they want to be a high school teacher or something like that, but that's it. So what we do by creating these, rule, these reels is give the uh, waiting child an opportunity to express what their personality is to potential uh, families that are looking to adopt, and um, it becomes a really effective recruitment tool. Um, sorry, I'm just going to leave we started in 2016. This is our founder. Her name is Casey Stanley. It's her husband, Pete. They adopted Tez from the Minnesota Foster Care System in 2018, I believe. Uh, and then just to give you an idea, we've created a video that gives you a quick snapshot of exactly what we're doing. There's nothing more powerful than a story. Stories change the world. In the United States, there are 100,000 kids who are waiting to be adopted, and there are millions of families who need to hear their stories. Since 2016, we have been on a mission to tell the stories of kids who are waiting to be adopted, working with counties, adoption agencies, and faith communities to find a forever family for every child. We travel the state, filming these kids, giving them a voice and a platform to tell their story. We share these videos at churches, conferences, and community events, inviting people to meet these kids, to talk and dream and pray about bringing this kid, this specific, real, quirky, brave, resilient kid into their home, into their family. We also swim upstream to ensure that fewer kids end up needing to be adopted in the first place, telling the stories of birth families who overcame crisis and received the support they needed to keep their kids out of the system, of foster families who have opened their hearts and homes to provide temporary stability to children in the system, and of churches and organizations that are wrapping around foster and adoptive families with practical support. And it's working. Birth families are staying together, foster families are stepping forward, and forever families are being built. And this is only possible because of people like you. Your support changes lives. Your gift builds families. Your partnership changes the story. And there's nothing more powerful than a story. Because stories change the world. Right now, on any given day in the state of Minnesota, there are 10,000 kids in the foster care system. Of those 10,000 kids, 1,000 are waiting for their forever homes. So all that means is that approximately every day, 1,000 kids have had the rights of their bio parents terminated, and that is an irrevocable, irrevocable decision by the courts. And so that means 1,000 on average uh, children do not have a home to go home to. And those are the kids that we focus on. Um, uh, a lot of times, uh, sometimes the kids will not be so keen, maybe the teenagers, on creating a video because they might be jaded by the system or something like that. But it's interesting how when we um, suggest that it might be some sort of memento or something like an artistic expression, they kind of warm up to the idea and um, we're able to get those reels for the, uh, the teens that are in the process of possibly aging out. To uh, continue, I wanted to share some statistics that are quite sobering, but I think they're really crucially important because they give a very clear snapshot of just exactly what the situation is for these kids. So um, uh, approximately 80%, up to 80% of those who are incarcerated in the United States today have one thing in common. They have been in foster care. 80% of those who are sex trafficked 
have also been in foster care. Now that's actually a conservative estimate. We draw statistics from a number of different sources and one of them would say actually up to 95%. And just, just a note on that, this might seem obvious, but I think it's something it's, it's good to remember. You know, I know many of you are probably parents and you know in your, your heart if anything ever happened to your child, if they were in danger, you would go to the ends of the earth and beyond to rescue that child, to protect them. And it's really important, though sobering, to keep in mind that predators and traffickers know completely, they're completely aware of the fact that children in foster care do not have that protection and that interest towards them. Not only are they aware of it, but they capitalize upon it. And it's a stark reality, I think, of um, what's happening in our culture today that as trafficking becomes more and more prevalent, we realize just how vulnerable those in foster care are. 20% uh, of those who age out of the foster care system at age 18 will become homeless the day after they turn 18, the day after. Two thirds of those who are in the foster care system, girls, um, will become pregnant by the age of 21. And then unfortunately, two thirds of those babies will in turn go into foster care. I don't have this on my slide, but only 3% of those who are in foster care will graduate from college. And from 2006 to 2018, the number of children in foster care has doubled, and that's largely due to the opioid epidemic. So that uh, is very sobering, I realize, but there's a reason we have the word hope <laughs> in our title. We believe this is a very practical, hands-on uh, answer to the problem of getting the word out there that these children exist, that they are not a block of stati statistics, and they have real hopes and dreams, and they have a story. Who can have a real? Any waiting kid in Minnesota. So that would mean seven groups, zero to 18 year olds, um, kids in treatment centers, any child whose parental rights have been terminated, the rights of their parents have been terminated. Um, I'm just gonna move on quickly because they're a little bit short on time here. And thankfully, we have just found out recently that the social workers we've worked with who were so grateful to be able to partner with have given us high marks on the efficacy of what we are doing. In addition, we have a third party consultant that has found universal agreement that Real Hope videos are great and impactful in many cases. We're super glad to have this to share with as well because it's something um, that's uh, measurable and gives people an idea of how successful, successful we become. Some of the amazing partner agencies that we partner with are Nexus Family Healing. Perhaps you've heard of some of these um, folks. Lutheran Social Services is one of our bigger ones. Um, and they contract with the government in order to facilitate adoption and foster care. You may not be aware of the fact that it's actually entirely free if you contract with one of these agencies to adopt from foster care in Minnesota. There are fairly limited, uh, excuse me, there isn't very much limitation. Uh, you can be single, you don't have to own property. Um, so a lot of people uh, don't realize that it's quite accessible to be an adopter if you are um, working within foster care. Another initiative we have is called Upstream, and in this initiative what we want and desire to do is uh, surround those who are in foster care and support them, support the birth families um, of children whose families, the rights have not been terminated yet. And so um, we help support those who are fostering themselves. We work with organizations, amazing organizations like um, Safe Families for Children, where uh, we work with birth mothers who are in crisis to get them the support that they need so that the children don't have to go in foster care in the first place. Normally I would share the uh, video for this, but... Uh... We are Kim and Cyrus, been in shelter foster care for over 15 years. We're on call 24 hours a day. It could be 11 o'clock, 1 in the morning, 6 in the morning, anytime. 7? Okay. Um, he usually takes the calls. He's the one that kind of deals with uh, the placement center, and I'm usually home uh, starting the process, you know, just getting things together. Uh, usually he can just tell me how many, ages, and gender. We usually take it from there. Yeah. When you pick the kid up from the shelter, you can't prepare for it emotionally you just have to go with it you know once you see them embrace them the best way you can so when a child first walks through the door the first thing you establish is that they're in a safe place so when the children come into our home they are part of our family 
there is no separation of, of anything. So he's Uncle Cyrus and I'm Auntie Kim. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a home. We're gonna do everything that I do with my biological kids. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when they come in a sibling group, the older child feels like they're the parent or that they've been taking care of the, the siblings. The older one would say something like, it's time for my sister to eat or I need to make a bottle. You have to really let them know that we are here to take care of all of you and you don't have to worry about your siblings while you're here. And it doesn't take long no. for them to have fun and kind of, you know, let that go. Right. We had a, a placement of a young little guy. He was in second grade or third grade and I had to drive him to school as I go to work every day. He loves to talk and sing to school every day. So it was a, a, a bonding experience with, the, with this little guy for that three month period. Yeah. Years later, we went to an event, a concert at a church one time. We were behind, we were talking to people and everything, and somebody said, Cyrus. And then the lady turns around, are you Cyrus Massenberg? You have my son in your home. He talks about yeah. you and auntie all the time. Yeah. Going to the movies or going to a picnic or planning, you know, we do Midnight Madness here where we all put on our PJs on, we go to bed early and we wake up and watch movies and have snacks. All of those things are just you living in your home. And so a child would love to enter your home and be a part of that. We have a home, you know, we can, we can show love towards someone else that's in need right now. I know that I'm making a difference in their life. I may not ever see it, but I know what I've done is it's helping them. Yeah. We don't have control over where they've come from or where they may go. We have the seasons in our lives. This is a season that you're able to bless this child or show them that love and bring them into your family. And if you can do that, even one season matters in the life of a child. Uh, so our ask is, uh, on average, it's about $600 for a reel. Um, we go to every county in, in the state of Minnesota and we uh, create activities for the child to help express themselves. Um, we have a very small team, just due to security and other reasons, of three or four people. And um, we create these reels. We are funded 80% by individual givers um, and then 20% by grants. And if it weren't for people and groups like you, we wouldn't be able to exist. Thankfully, we have never had to say no to a child yet. So it's very exciting that we're able to um, keep functioning in this way. Really quick, if you're interested at all in getting further information before I wrap up, um, there are three things you can text to this number. Number one, if you're possibly interested in finding out more about adoption, just text, text ADOPT. Secondly, Upstream is the initiative to help those who are potentially going into foster care and not going to foster care. Um, and you can find more information about that by texting Upstream. And third, if you're interested in giving, um, feel free to text GIVE. And then it'll just ask for two prompts, your name and your email. And to wrap up, I just want to share um, one of our adoption stories. This is Elijah. He was adopted, I believe, in 2020. Oops. I'm Brandon, and this is Karis. We adopted Elijah in 2021. In the beginning of our marriage, we started to try to have our own children. That just didn't pan out. And one day, I had never brought it up. And Brandon out just- of, Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. And he was like, well, what do you think about adoption? This is the picture of us dropping off our application part mm -hmm. one. I've learned and just off TV or social media or I don't know, it's like teenagers don't get, or their chances of getting adopted are more lower than if you were a toddler or something. So that kind of affected me a bit, but I was more like, maybe I could be that special one. I think if you ask anybody with adoption, and you always kind of automatically go to a younger age for some reason, but I was open. To expand more why we were open with the age range, like we knew that whatever kid or kids that the Lord brought into our life, that there would be a grace at every point in the journey. It just was a yes, yes, yes. When I did my Real Hope shoot, I wasn't really thinking if I was going to get adopted after. Just another day, another thing, another place, you know. Someone had told us that his reel was in progress. It was awesome to like hear his voice, 
just how he composed himself. I know I watched that many times. Yeah, um, I watched it tons. So this is, this is adoption day. Well, I'd say one thing I didn't expect was them being very like loving towards me, you know, like, like number one, I'm a teenager, I'm like, I don't have like a cute face. I mean, I mean they say I have a cute face, but I don't know about like, <laughs> I'm new, but I don't know. Like I couldn't really like just wrap my head, head around them showing like love and affection towards me. How Lige sees the world and how he describes things is very eye-opening. Been doing this for two years. We've connected in a way where people can't really like know or learn how we connected in that way. I think I kind of look at it as though we're a team and we have our roles and our responsibilities and... Like with the team, you know, each role is important and, you know, it might be a little role, but at the end of the day, it'll, the result will be bigger, so. I'm Elijah. And, and we're the half oh. runs. <laughs> I, I, I forgot, I said, I'm Elijah, and, and we're the half rounds, and this, and this is, is our upstream story. <laughs> well, thank you again so much for having me. I don't know if we have time for Q. We need to move on. Two questions, if anyone has anything. Can you back up and put your text number back up there? Yeah. What ages do they start to make these reels? On average, um, we uh, the average age of the child that we make reels for is 12. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, uh, but we would make any, any age, that's just kind of like our average. So it takes a while for them to find out that a child needs to be into the foster care system. Unfortunately, sometimes it's not noticed until a child is school age, et cetera. And so um, usually the child is a little bit older once they get into the foster care system. Yeah. Um, I have a question that is kind of a negative question. Because I know people that have been through this, and sometimes it works out, and sometimes it's basically a disaster. And I know one of the people that I talked to, they had to give back the child. Um, and she said, everybody that goes through this needs to be full-time counseling. Uh, family counseling. So I'm wondering what kind of support, I mean, if that's the case, that's an overgeneralization. But I'm sure, I mean, one of the people that I know, I mean, she was burned by cigarettes by her foster homes and in five fosters and all that stuff. And she, as an adult, now was sort of a mess still. But um, what resources are available for people that go through this process if they do need support? Mm -hmm. So by law in the state of Minnesota, you are required to do a certain amount of therapy, not just the child, but actually the family as well. So in the case of like Pete um, and Casey, our founders, um, when they adopted Tez, they're actually still in counseling as well as Tez, and that's paid for by the state. Um, so you know, I can speak to your friend's situation as far as like, I don't know what the rules were then, but I think now more and more, there's an understanding that's an absolute necessity. And then of course, to the beginning, to the point of your beginning of your question, there's never, the, there's never, it's never risk free, of course, and we would never minimize um, the risk that's involved, but we still believe it's worth it to try, given the right person. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, any other questions? I think, Mary, you'll, you'll stick around afterwards and yep. we can talk later. Okay.